Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 314. 314. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. 2020 rates for Walt Disney World are now available. Prices have risen just as they have on annual passes and parking and such. So MEI and Mouse Fan Travel can help you find the best value for your Disney vacation, any Disney vacation, Disneyland, Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, and pretty much anywhere you want to go. And you forgot to mention one of your favorites of all, Disneyland Paris. Yes, I can't believe I would forget that. And we're just <laughs> planning it right now, actually. Yes, you should get the, that airfare now. I will now. get that going. <laughs> I will do it. Anyway, we're first going to talk about Disney Villains After Hours. So Disney Villains After Hours, there's 10 of them. Um, they're like the other After Hours events, except that there's, it really has a theme with the villains and you've got the show, um, that's Villains Unite the Night and we can see we did it as a media event. We actually changed our flights coming back for the Toy Story junket, uh, Toy Story 4 junket, but we also did the Disney Villains. We even changed our flight again to come back for the Disney Villains event. And right now we're looking at um, a variety of different snack items uh, that you can buy, but you don't have to. I did purchase one item and that was a brownie uh, sleep, uh, the, what, the Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow, Hollow brownie. Mm-hmm, with the Headless Horseman. It, it, was, it wasn't all that. You know, you get the complimentary, I don't want to say included, uh, snacks and such like popcorn and drinks um, included. And here is merchandise and there's shirts and there's Tervis. And um, I think there was, was there a mug, a hat? You have a hat. Oh, yeah. We're going to see a, a little look. We had a little event before we went to Disney After Hours and they showcased a lot of the merchandise. I'm actually drinking out of a Tervis right now here. And it says Disney Villains After Hours. And that's really nice because it's a stainless steel. The nice thing is um, Disney does so much with Tervis and especially lately they've had stain, a lot of stainless steel um, and those hold the ice we so did long. a test at epcot and it was the <laughs> hottest day like 100 degrees and i put some water with ice in it went away all day i'm talking about eight nine hours came back still cold so tervis two thumbs up for me and uh, and here's the uh, various lighting going in it reminded me a little of mickey's not so scary halloween party mm-hmm. but after that it didn't remind me at all of mickey's not so scary halloween party they have a dj up front Um, And I just would mention like they, oh, and here's Maleficent Breathing Fire, which is one of the aspects that they talk about, um, you know, because it's at night as opposed to during the day. Yeah, they've done it in Paris. They've had Maleficent out after dark breathing fire there. And I saw that and I thought, wow, that was really cool. And then not that long later, we have the brand new Maleficent Dragon breathing fire here at this uh, new event at night. So um, it is uh, from 10 p.m. till 1 a.m. is the official time, but you can get in at 7 p.m. And really, you can pretty much stay until almost 2 because, like, Maleficent's last uh, go around is at like what one well, she starts twenty yeah, or like, one thirty or something like that. Yeah, you're being entertained. There is entertainment in, until about uh, ten of two, as you said. Right. So you could get on that ticket about seven hours. Although some people have tickets already for the day or annual passes, um, but otherwise, instead of three hours, you can kind of get four hours of entertainment. Um, there's still only three hours of let's say the Mickey bars, the Mickey ice cream sandwiches popcorn in the low crowds of course and low crowds yes and we didn't see too many crowds as far as uh rides and such although i think mine train i heard had like a 20 to 30 minute wait i didn't look at that one in particular so now we're looking at the all new show this is a, a first for the disney after hours events so there's no meet and greets there are no villains meet and greets i don't think there's any character meet and greets during this event and i know that was the big disappointment for for guests Um, But there is this show, Villains Unite the Night. I don't even want to try to get into what it's about because I found it a little confusing. It had to do with planets. It's about villains. (laughs) It had to do with planets and stuff. There's Megara right there. Yes. So it has so many characters. And I thought it was entertaining enough. I actually ended up seeing it um, maybe one and a half times. Um, and it was easy, you know, an easy watch, really. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, it's presented three times per uh, per night, and I saw it two full times. And there is Hades, and there we have uh, Jafar. And I like how Jafar is uh, similar to the Jafar you see at Mickey's uh, Not So Scary, the face Jafar. Right. And this reminds me of the villains mix and mingle type show in that it's a little more edgy than than some in in costumes and. 
in you know everything really and if you remember the old uh, villains unleashed the show that they were the event they had at disney's hollywood studios they also had uh, unique acts that were a bit edgy like sword swallowers and things and here you have a lot of juggling and fire and things like that so it's a, you know I, I find it to be quite interesting especially i was right there in the front row so i was very close to all of it no i thought i thought the stunts and such were were actually very good um, i like that better than some of the other aspects um, but I liked, you know, seeing all the characters and such as well. So there's seven more dates through August 8th. And then August 16th, as we're watching this, because we're looking at the, you know, th there's actually a lot of great... Axe juggling. Yes. Who would have thought you'd go to the Magic Kingdom and see axe juggling? <laughs> so August 16th actually starts Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So we're less than two months out from Halloween which I've been discussing on uh, Instagram a little well, bit. Well, you and I just talked about this. The last Disney Villains After Hours is only eight days before the first mm -hmm. Mickey's Not So Scary. So you could almost do... I Two would, in the same vacation if yes. you plan it right. I mean, I travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would rather do Halloween and Christmas if I was coming into town. Um, but not that this isn't fun, but it's nice to do something kind of really different. Oh, here's that fire juggler. And there's like a bonus. Somehow the fire is sprayed all around. I've never seen that in a, in a fire juggler before. Oh, maybe not to that extent. But the lighting on the castle actually is one of my favorite aspects of this as well. Now, cost is $139 ahead of time, $144 on the event night. But if you're pass holders or DVC members, then it's $109 plus tax. And for the amount of entertainment, you know, the shorter lines, the um, unlimited, although, I mean, how many Mickey bars can you have? But uh, drinks, uh, like uh, Diet Cokes, mm -hmm. Cokes. Water. Uh, water. Bottled water. Yes, bottled water. Um, popcorn and, uh, and, you know, Mickey bars, Mickey ice cream sandwiches. Again, I mean, how many can you have in three hours? But I'm sure that there's some people who can eat a lot of them. I can't. And so. <laughs> you can also, as we said, you can buy the specialty food items we showed earlier, too. You can, but I, I kind of like <laughs> well, the Mickey ice cream sandwich, yes. I just wanted to try it, and I actually brought a lot of it home. Here is Maleficent, probably my favorite part of this whole show. It's the big fireworks finale. Not full-size fireworks, but they, they do a very nice job with uh, this finale here. Honestly, it was more fireworks than I expected. I didn't expect a big fireworks finale. Very Paris-like. This reminds me of something you'd see at uh, Disneyland Paris. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, you know, I enjoyed the show. I think everybody pretty much enjoyed the show. You want to wait till, if you can, the last one because it's actually after hours. Like really after hours, it starts at one o'clock, one o'clock, which is the end of the year, three hours. Um, I would wait till then as long as it seems like the weather is holding because then you can get your three hours in of rides and everything and not have to worry about um, you know having a show in the middle. And there is Adventureland and you have some fog there, nicely themed, some nice projections, Disney Villains After Hours. They've, they've really done a lot more with this than I've seen in previous After Hours as far as making, making the, uh, the park look special. And it's not that much more uh, costly than a regular After Hours, but you get extra entertainment. So Pirates of the Caribbean has a little something extra in it. I don't wanna say a lot, but uh, I thought it was better than the Halloween uh, version, which had like one character or something. I mean, they have a number of like this guy's, you know, don't go, don't go. But obviously there's no, there's no wait. So why wouldn't you go? Well, this time we have <laughs> a pirate uh, Captain Barbosa mm -hmm. instead. So uh, I think it's a better event, that, as you said, than the, the Halloween last year. And there was really no line at this point. And this was... I guess when the the party started, when the event started, there was a, a long line or a relatively long line. For pirates? For Yes. Oh, because uh, it's the first time they've seen an enhanced pirate, I right, see. Right, but everybody just got in line for it. But if you just wait till later in the evening, it should be no problem. And also, it gives you plenty of time to interact with some of these pirates, like this very generous pirate <laughs> who is uh, asking to hold our valuables so some of the bad pirates didn't steal them. Well, I didn't have any valuables to give her or to the bad pirates, so very it's okay. Very generous <laughs> offer, though. A very generous <laughs> offer. So here we're walking up. You can see um, we had actually gotten uh, like media fast passes, but we didn't need anything like that. It was really just a total walk on. Oh, yeah. I mean, complete everything. I mean, anything I saw, there was zero wait, but we didn't look around to go on rides until probably the last hour of the evening. Actually, um, during the first hour while you were at the first show, I did walk around. I didn't see Mine Train, but almost everything had like five minutes uh, 
a haunted mansion had nobody there so it was really quite nice and that was mr uh, captain barbosa who will be making a live appearance as soon as we get around the corner and we're seeing the updated redhead here yes and we have shown her um, a couple times in the past and i just want to say peter pan did have a wait there was a wait for peter pan that's the only wait i saw and i know mine train had a wait so you will get some waits but peter pan probably by the end of the night would have been more of a walk on so as we go around the corner we're going to see the uh, the big enhancement it'll be the live captain barbosa and of course he is talking to you talking to your boat and one of the good things about going to the after hours event here, unlike the Halloween party where all the boats are full and you have two boats coming at the same time, often you would not really get a chance to interact with Captain Barbosa because there was just so many people. This time, when you're the only one there, he is fully interacting with you, at least when, when we rode. When, right, towards the end of, again, towards the end of the night, which is for me, the best time for the, or certainly for the rides, you know, and during shows, especially during the, like the second show is probably a terrific time. And he's also much better lit, I find mm -hmm. now, than he was at the last, uh, at the Halloween party. Captain Barbosa looks a little crazy when you go up on him. He's like, oh, <laughs> well, I think that's <laughs> he the was point. really good, actually. He was, uh, he was fun. Um, I thought he was better than, who was it, Gunpowder Gun Pete? Gunpowder Pete, <laughs> much better than Gunpowder Pete. And, and I'm not saying that Gunpowder Pete wasn't, you know, good. It's just like you don't know who Gunpowder Pete is where you do know who Captain Barbosa is. So also Space Mountain had a special overlay where it was pitch black. We didn't have a chance to ride. I did ride, though, at the Halloween party. And here are some pictures from the last Halloween party. And I know it's a different kind of soundtrack. It supposedly was different than, uh, again, the Halloween event. But pitch black on that space mountain is awesome i loved it it was really scary because you couldn't see one thing i mean not a thing and, and i kind of would like to do that so next after hours type event there i would definitely be interested or during the halloween party when we go so there is uh, mickey's premium bar popcorn a diet coke we didn't you know we were pretty busy so we we really didn't stop for too many snacks anyway on this evening but we wanted to at least show them and here is our uh, Perfect view of Maleficent, the Maleficent dragon, coming right down Main Street with the castle behind, and uh, and she's about to breathe some fire. And this only happens during the last showing, which again is around 1:20, um, and she doesn't get here till one, like probably 1:30, 1:35 oh, or yeah. so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are the villains. I took this with the phone because I don't know what you were doing, but I thought this was really. I was cool. getting the shot you just saw. Yes. Okay. He was getting the other <laughs> shot, but I'm like thinking the villains and Maleficent because there was almost like, I would call it a kiss good night of villains. Oh at the yeah. End of the Look night. at that. I mean, that I have to give you credit. That was such an awesome shot. And thank you for getting that. I mean, how awesome. Maleficent breathing fire right in front of the villains on the train station. Well, the best part for me is the big bad wolf, like, you know, almost egging her on. He's so excited about it. <laughs> um, but they were up there for quite some time. I don't know for how long exactly, but probably at least like a half hour because um, the different uh, characters would swap out, like Captain Hook and the Big Bad Wolf were not out the entire time. Um, it, all of them, you, you know, swapped out during it. So. By the end, they were all out there. Yes, but um, but during the time that they were out, it wasn't all of them, you know, like Gaston left for a little bit. and But this was fantastic. It reminded me, we just did this... Uh, conference ipw over at disneyland and it reminded me of that they had a lot of characters out. yeah and characters you don't see very often like the bowler hat guy here who uh, only usually appears once a year at the uh, mickey's boo to you parade during the halloween party and we see him every so often for meet and greets for other events but very really very rarely and here is the big bad wolf i don't think he should get too close to corella because you never know what's <laughs> going to happen over yes, there corella has taken a kind of a liking to him and now i think he's going to uh want to scare the uh, the, the stepsisters. <laughs> well, they don't all look scared, and I certainly Lady Tremaine no, doesn't look no. scared. No, she takes nothing from uh, anybody. But this, this was one of my favorite um, parts of the night, and I'm glad that we stayed longer. We had just come in from California. That morning. We were up at 3 well, in the morning yes. California time. Flew in and did this event, so we, it was a late night for us. Well, we came in around, what, 8 p.m. or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so we had just been up for a really long time. Um, but we ended up being able to make it. But then the next day we had what the big reason for us cutting our trip short from California was the Toy Story 4 
media junket. And uh, this it started was... off in a great way here with Woody and uh, Buzz Lightyear. They're awesome toys. And if you tell them that somebody is coming, <laughs> look what happens. I think that we got to see a lot of the different merchandise items, but this actually was the best, the best ones probably um, in that, in the interactivity. And I think they'll be so popular in the stores. I haven't even seen them in the stores yet, but I know, I think Target has them. Well, if you tell them that the coast is clear, I think you're going to see a Woody wake up and, and our tester here is going to tell him that and uh, and Woody is going to come back alive. So it's uh, really neat. We have a Buzz Lightyear and we'll have to open it and uh, test him out. I, I'm actually looking forward to that. We've been really busy. Um, and then there's also uh, Forky next to them. I don't know what Jessie does. She, she does not fall over, but here's Forky. How oh, awesome, a walking Forky. We have now seen uh, Toy Story 4 twice. We had seen it a couple weeks ago and then we went on our own yesterday. And this is such a fantastic movie and Forky is a lot of fun. Gabby Gabby is my favorite new character, but Forky is probably the second new uh, new favorite. And this is from Thinkway Toys, and they've been making toys, I think, for a pretty long time. I didn't, I had never even heard of them. Something for Halloween this year. That okay? Jeff wanted to put that mask on. And I'm like, <laughs> you, absolutely you not. You forbade it. And then Jeremiah ended up putting on, and I'm like, <laughs> See, you really? Made me look bad. <laughs> well, at least I wasn't the first one or the only one who had that idea. No. And uh, anyway, we are just we're not going to look for too long at the merch. Merchandise. And I just find it very interesting that so little of this merchandise is actually at Walt Disney World. So if you go into the Walt Disney World shops, and I think we're showing a little later from World of Disney, mm -hmm. not too much. Mm -hmm. It's com it's like completely different, except I know that the Forky is now for sale at Walt Disney World, although I have not seen it. I that. have not seen it. Maybe it's sold out or, or you have to ask for it. Probably perhaps. have to ask to see it. And speaking of Forky, here comes Woody and Forky, and I and I was very surprised. This was a really nice bonus, and Forky seems uh, very lifelike here with uh, with Woody. So um, during the Toy Story Four press junket, we had about seventy five minutes within Toy Story Land. Uh, the group did, so it was really empty. And normally I'd be like, oh, let's go ride Slinky Dog Dash, but then we see. Woody is with Forky instead of just Woody that by himself. Change everything. <laughs> so uh, we spent a lot of time either in line or, you know, meeting Woody a couple times. And not only Woody, but we met Bo Peep and such too. And you can see the Bonnie on the uh, on the back of the, the feet of Forky there, just like in the film. And I believe he also met at that Disney Parks blog event uh, That's true. like that. Mm -hmm. And here is Bo Peep. And what I didn't realize at the time is that Bo Peep doesn't have her crook for some reason uh, during the day, but she does meet at Toy Story Land. Uh, but for us, she, well, she was showing her, it looks like she's showing her muscles. Um, but for us, she also had that crook. Well, I was asking how her arm was, you know, we had just seen the film, so I wanted to make sure she was uh, okay. I don't know if she wears that during the day or not. I yes, heard, I've oh, seen does pictures. She? Mm -hmm. Because she has that other thing on her arm. So I, I have seen that, but I wasn't sure. You know, and, you know, not everybody has seen Toy Story 4 yet. If you haven't, you should go see it. And I think most of you probably by the time you hear this will have. So it was a really special time to be in Toy Story Land with so few people. We've had a, luckily we've had that opportunity to do it uh, a couple times, very early in the morning for the, uh, I think it was the pass holder right, preview. Right, the pass holder preview was, was fantastic. And we have uh, the soldiers going by and... They just kept going, so. <laughs> and we did an after hours. I think we did a, a Disney's Hollywood Studios after hours. Yes, and it we was did, low, and that low, was uh, crowd You too. did like a Toy Story or the Slinky Dog Dash like eight times. Oh yeah, I remember. And this was so much fun because we were Buzz Lightyear had nobody, not one person around. So I, I told him maybe he can uh, brighten up some of the uh, guests on Slinky Dog Dash. So uh, look what he does as the coaster goes by. He gives them a big Buzz Lightyear hello. I thought that was pretty funny actually. <laughs> yeah, he was great. And he, it was so much fun. I think we had already seen him doing that that move ahead of time. Just so. for his own enjoyment. Right. I, I saw him doing it from afar, and he was just like waving crazily at the coaster. And the coaster's not even filled, so that's uh, that was pretty amazing. And here is Jesse. And uh, we have not seen Jesse probably, I don't want to say seen her, but met her since probably Christmas time. 
um, when they had kind of little accents to their outfits and such for the holidays. Um, so we went and again, no, no wait. And this is her new location, uh, even during the day, because now you're going to have Bo Peep over there with Woody. Although you will not be seeing Forky there on a regular basis, but this is where the, that she would used to meet with, uh, with Woody in front of Toy Story Mania. It would be nice if we saw Forky again being held, but I know there's a statue as you have told me, so you never know. But, uh, anyway, we're going to see them heading out now. Again, that was a really quick party. I, I think we only rode one ride, one Slinky Dog Dash, and I was really wanting a Midway Mania. Like I, I was like, let's go ride Midway Mania, but you're like, I want to hang out with Ford. Well, I wanted, I wanted <laughs> to get there at exit. Well, Midway Mania is always there, even though you can't ride over and over again usually. But, uh, but Forky is not, except right now you have a statue of Forky. That's right. So. That's right. So the very next day you had the entire cast come to town and you were there. I was there. I mean, it's not the entire cast, but it's a lot of the cast was here. You had uh, Keanu Reeves and um, Tony Hale, who is Forky. And Forky is, is really the most popular of the new characters, I believe, at this point. So um, there were two press conferences and I recorded both. I didn't ask any questions because they didn't call on me. Um, but it was a really, it was a really, I really enjoyed the press conferences. I always learned so much. And my favorite part was when uh, Tom, Cru Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, <laughs> not Tom Cruise, oh, was a not special there. bonus. <laughs> Maybe Tom Hanks. Yes, Tom Hanks uh, answered a question, or I, he had answered a question, but then he started in on a story about Fantasmic, although he called it Fantastique. Which is that actually, could be an all, he could have just spilled the beans on an all new show coming in to the future. France. Fantastique. To yes, France. Disneyland <laughs> Paris. I'm sure that was it. But this is such a, a fun story. So um, here it is. It has always been, come on, guys. <laughs> I've said, come on, guys, eight billion times in some, you know, some iteration of all the Toy Story stuff. I, I think the, the, the newbies, I guess you're the only new one here, the, there is a. There is a profound thing that comes from being Orky or Bo or Woody. Um, that um, brief story, you know, you know, it, it, you've been to Disneyland as well. I don't know if they have it in Disney World, but you know, they have that fantastic, you know, whatever, and it, uh, everybody's fireworks and there's dancers. And in Disneyland, the the closing of the show is um, the Mark Twain steamboat comes by and all of the Disney characters are dancing on the steamboat. Belle and Sleeping Beauty and Mickey and everyone. Uh, Mulan is there. They're all there. Captain Hook, Peter Pan. And uh, I was there with my family. <clears throat> my daughter, who's in her 30s, burst into tears. I said, what's wrong? And she said, look, Dad, look, look, look at the end of the boat. And it was Woody and Buzz. And she said, Dad, you'll, you will always be on that boat dancing for the rest of time as long as uh, Disneyland is here. And, you know, uh, you, that's, that's, a, that's more than just a cool thing. It's actually some sort of, it's some sort of talisman, I think, that we all get to carry with us now just because we were smart enough to say, how do you think we should do this, guys? Come on, guys! How do you <laughs> I do love that segment, and um, it's not only fun, but it's emotional as well. And, uh, you know, I think he loves Disneyland. It just sounds like it. And He you knew know, a lot, except a lot for that of the characters. one minor little thing. He really knew a lot. So I really enjoyed that. And you did a fine job, by the way, of recording. Very nice and still. And you're taking pictures at the same time, so very impressive. Thank you. So now we're in the world of Disney. We're going to look at some of the Toy Story 4 merchandise. And, of course, Forky is the main focus because uh, he seems to be the popular character. And I just want to say we're not showing... A, we have video a video of the merchandise on the channel, this is just a tiny little bit of what we have. Um, we're showing a little bit in World of Disney and we're showing a little bit in Once Upon a Toy. Uh, yeah, Forky is all over everything. And what I like better than really the merchandise is sometimes the, the displays and you know the artwork and it's kind of fun to go through the stores and see what, what those are. Yeah, they did, did a great job. I mean, that was a larger than life Forky. This Forky, I think, is no longer for sale. Yeah, apparently he has been pulled. And when we were at World of Disney two days ago, he was not there. And you thought he sold out, but apparently he was actually pulled. And this is actually very cute, this little mug. I just chose a few of the cute items to talk about uh, with a sheep. And I think that will be a very popular seller. And there's several sheep items. Uh, Bo Peep sheep, you know, rerun things. And then there's a, a shirt, a tank top, if lost, please return to Bo Peep. 
So there's some there's some fun little items as I said we just cut it down a lot so we're just talking really quickly about the merchandise. Now we're over at Once Upon a Toy which is perfect for Toy Story. Yes you have Buzz Lightyear outside um, and oh and Mr. Potato Head inside it really is all about just about all about Toy Story uh, at this point and like all of the displays uh, all the like the artwork is Toy Story related. All new, Toy Story all 4. new artwork, yeah. And there's Bo Peep. Bo Peep was not available at the World of Disney. So if you're looking for something, you might want to make sure you check all the shops. And this this crook here, also not at the World of Disney. And there's also, like you can see, um, the alien above. And the little I, hidden Mickey on, the, uh, on the, the, the claw there. And I don't remember Woody up ahead. And I'm not saying he wasn't there. I just don't remember. He him? was probably there, but I don't I remember no him either. I mean, it's such a, an impressive uh, figure, but, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we just haven't looked up in all the years we've been going to Once Upon a Toy. I don't think that's possible. They used to have all kinds of figures and things in the uh, world of Disney, which they don't anymore have. So there's also, like, a wall you can take a p pictures in front of. And then there's artwork around the room. And, again, we have a video with all the merchandise, uh, not all of it, but a lot that we saw and then more of the display uh, artwork and such. So if you want to see more of that, we do have that full video. Plus, we also have the press conferences that I mentioned, um, about 10 minutes of each because they wouldn't let us put, they said no to putting the whole thing up. So also the ganachery gets in on the act with some yummy uh, chocolate Toy Story items. Now, this was really hard because I, I really just wanted to get one item, which I, we did. Um, we didn't end up getting this. This is the alien. And then what you do is you take the, the little mallet and you hit him in the head. Horrible. And then stuff Terrible. comes out. <laughs> but I've never done one of those. They always have something like that. And I believe this is a marshmallow pop of a uh, of, uh, of That Forky. may have to be our next little treat. We might, we might get that. I, I thought that I, I did want that. You kept saying how you, were, you did so well with your grocery shopping. The entire shopping was less money than it would cost for one of these little cakes. No, and, I, then, and then I knew you really wanted the cake, so you ended up with the cake after all. This is at Amaretz. <laughs> I, I had like a $17 purchase, which was like three bags of groceries. And I'm like, you know, that's the same price as that petite cake. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting a lot of groceries for the price of one little cake. But then we ended up getting the cake anyway. By the eventually. way, those uh, those eclair looking things were uh, pretty impressive too. And they were less costly. I think they were around six dollars. Where the small petite cake, which we ended up getting, we left and then. Just I like, knew you wanted yes. it, and I figured if, if you wanted it, now was the time to do it. And uh, so we brought home a petite cake, and we don't go to Amaretz that often. It's, it's not inexpensive, so. Um, it's something that we've really only done a few times. And by the way, this little prop here, that is uh, our own Funko Pop that we were given at the, uh, media, at the event. media event. And yes. it is so cute. And uh, I really enjoy just seeing him next to the cake. So this is the cake. Amaretz does such a nice job with the bags and such. And just it's like buying presents. diamonds. Yeah, it's you, like... you look it through glass at this stuff <laughs> to buy it, and they put it double wrapped and very fancy. The presentation is really nice. And so anyway, here is that Toy Story 4 Forky cake, which is really chocolate, 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 and how can you go wrong? It, it that is, it's a very nice cake. Much lighter than you would think, too. It looks like it'd be a big, heavy uh, cake, but it, it when you cut it with a knife, it is just like cutting through butter. It is very, very thin. Well, it reminds me of cutting through like a tiramisu. Yes, it's exactly. It's very exactly. soft, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's. It, I definitely recommend it if you're in the area. It's and a splurge, I know, but it's good. It's you know two or three gross bags of groceries full <laughs> price wise but it really was very nice so we are looking at uh, epcot and they have removed the first set of the uh, what are they called again this was the leave a legacy oh, yes I, and i, I have, have one stones. but i had one mine was right around where these girls are and it is no longer there and i'm happy about that <laughs> well it's going to be outside the park soon um so half of this the west side is gone which is really nice i am so glad to have them gone Look at how open that is. It is really open, and I wonder what they'll do with it. I'm assuming all the pavement will be fairly even at some point in the near future. So here comes the Toy Story 4 monorail, because we haven't talked about Toy Story 4 enough yet. Um, they wrapped this monorail, monorail yellow, 
uh, with a variety of different characters. My favorite is Gabby Gabby. She is my favorite new character. Well, we will see that up close. We were fortunate to actually have written on the Toy Story 4 Monorail Yellow. I don't want to say fortunate because you can't see out the window. So if Not the best for taking pictures, if you, but we didn't need <laughs> pictures out the window. Well, really. I did. I, I was actually looking forward to taking pictures out the window, but you can't like see anything hardly. So um, if you're looking to take pictures actually out the window, this is not the monorail to take. Now this is the Ticket and Transportation mm -hmm. Center. We're kind of doing this out of sequence. We were coming from the Magic Kingdom, and as luck would have it, here we are, the Toy Story 4 monorail. And at this point I said, I knew we weren't going to be taking any pictures out the window. I really um, I really like the monorail wraps. I, I don't know if the first one we did was the Tron O-Rail, the Tron in 2010. I have a playlist now of all the monorail videos we have and it's like 17 or wow. so. Wow. So there's Gabby Gabby and then I think Benson has a red tie. So if you haven't seen Toy Story 4, these are so creepy, but Gabby Gabby is my favorite. You said you still don't trust her though. I don't trust her at the end of the movie. Ah, ah, let's not give it away though. No, I'm just saying I don't trust her. I she is not somebody I think that should ever be trusted because of what happens in the movie. So, um, but she is just a very phenomenal character and she's voiced by Christina Hendricks who does a very good job with her and apparently has a ventriloquist doll of her own. So to her, it was like, I don't know if it, you would call it kismet. Is that the word? Probably something like that. So as you can see, we are now over at the Magic Kingdom. So um, right now we're looking at the walkway that's being expanded uh, next to Cinderella Castle. And you can see... It's going to be much, much wider, and I think that'll be very, very helpful when the crowds hit the kingdom, especially after Tron opens. Well, it's going to be less charming in a way. You know, I like mm -hmm. the small winding paths, but at the same time, it will be really helpful. And although that is not the way to go to Tron, and if you think it's the way to <laughs> go to can, Tron... <laughs> you can go to Tron that way. Don't go that way, because it's not the way to go if you want to get there faster. Speaking of Tron, <laughs> Tron has uh, evolved in the one month since we have been there. <laughs> Look at all this track. So we had, yeah, we had gone to Disneyland, and uh, we were there a couple weeks, and then we had a lot going on. And this is the first time we've seen it in person since. And when we photographed it last time, it was really just starting. The track was really just starting. And now it looks like almost a full-on roller coaster. They've really put it together very fast. I know it took them a long time to get the ground set. Like, whatever the, the base of it is, it took them, I don't know if it took them a year. It well, took a long time. They had to move a retention pond and do all sorts of preliminary work. So, yeah. But, I mean, I think, I think what we're looking at here is the part of the track that will be enclosed. So, uh they had to get that done first. And this this is from the Barnstormer queue. Goofy's Barnstormer queue is my favorite place to get photos and video from, um, except the, the People Mover is good too for a different, they're both good and the People Mover is actually a ride. Barnstormer is too, but you can't see anything from the Barnstormer. Over the years, we've had to do a lot of attractions to get construction footage. Remember, we used to ride Dumbo oh, almost yes. every week. But that was like a 45-minute wait at least. I love the People Mover. It's probably my favorite attraction to ride con constantly. Like anytime we go to the Magic Kingdom, I want to ride the, the People Mover no matter what. Yeah, I would say this is my favorite ever construction project because it's just so enjoyable to uh, to view it from the areas that we get to view it from. Yeah, I mean, and also you had um, the the Speedway reopened just about a month ago. Right. And uh, it, this is amazing to me. I mean, I'm very happy that Space Mountain is not affected and, and the um, People Mover is not affected by the construction as far as nothing's going away. The... Autopia or the Tomorrowland Speedway was shortened a tiny bit. But, but you you don't even notice really I didn't, when you ride it. We didn't notice. It's still a decent length. And it's really nice that everything is staying and you're just getting the benefit of one new attraction. And it's going to be a signature attraction. We're getting e-tickets all over Walt Disney World. And again, we have price increases as well. But at least, you know, there's a lot coming in. So for 2021, the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, and you've been going... For all that time. Every year since 1971. That's a long time. And I'm I didn't an old go, man. Yes, I am old too. And <laughs> I've been going since 77. So I don't remember this much building, this much. You know, it's incredible. I, I used to say years ago, because as I'm getting older, they need to build more e-tickets because I'm getting older and I'm not going to be able to ride these forever. So now we have Guardians, Ratatouille. Uh, I don't know if the one at... Um, 
the Mickey ride will be an e-ticket, but you have... A Tron will certainly be an e-ticket. Inside of the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, maybe mm-hmm. two e-tickets. And then you oh, have... Oh, Rise of the Resistance, uh, right. double E. And then Tron. I mean, there's just all kinds of attractions all over Walt Disney World r- right now. So 2021, if you're not going to be here this year... 2021 will be the year to be here. The year to be here. I I've heard that, that uh, expression before. I bet that they that back will in the say 25th that. anniversary they would say it's the year to be here. And I bet I bet we'll hear that again because that will be the year to be here. But if you're not, you know, if you're going to go this year, go and fall. Skip the next couple months. Isn't the slogan now more than ever though? Yeah, but even Disney has said, you know, come and fall because there's so <laughs> much going on. I mean, there's you know, special hours if you're staying in a resort, there's uh, Mickey's Not So Scary, there's, you know, the food and wine, there's so many things. And that, that little Star Wars Yes, s- Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and the Skyliner. There's so much going on later this year. Illuminations uh, ends on September 30th, and we'll have that new show, Epcot Forever, temporary new show on uh, on October 1st. Personally, I say come that week because everything is going on at that time. So, believe it or not, that is another show. That's another show. And we want to thank our sponsor, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Definitely check them out, I think, right now with all the price increases and all that. Especially, you know, to try to get the best value. Um, When I was a travel agent, that was very important to me is not only to get everybody into the resort that they should be in and the restaurants they should be in, but really to try to help get the best value because I think that's really important for a vacation and MEI and Mouse Fan Travel can do that. So we will be doing a lot of other exciting things in the next week, including we are going up to the Kennedy Space Center for the NASA social for the next two and a half days. Yes. um, I mean, it's really just a couple of days and then we'll probably do a little Disney on the way back. But I think that will be really fun. We've been kind of holding off even mentioning that because it's like anything can happen. Like right now they could say, It's not going up. And then all of a sudden it gets bumped. But I have surgery on Friday, so they can't really bump it. Well, they can bump it. (laughs) They can bump it. It's just you will be bumped out. (laughs) So I have kind of major surgery on Friday. So hopefully by Sunday I'll be up for a show. So as soon as we get back from NASA Social, we're going to go out. And um, I'm not sure what we're going to find. And we still have Disney, so much Disneyland. But it would be nice to kind of find stuff here that will be of interest. And we should also mention that Disney has announced that uh, Platinum Pass and Platinum Plus Walt Disney World Annual Pass holders will get to preview Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Well, there's going to be, it sounds like there'll be signups, and so um, hopefully that will be very soon because Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will open in, let's see, it's June, July, August. It will open in two months, and uh, so hopefully pretty soon they'll be you know, getting those preview notices out. And and if you follow Disney online and uh, make sure to sign up for that when that goes, it, yeah, it's I complimentary. Yeah, I have a feeling it'll go, it'll go quick, though, very, very quick. Well, it's hard, you know, it's hard to know because the Disneyland ones went fairly quick, but there were, some people did multiples. It wasn't so quick. So we'll see. It depends how many... It depends how many... Remember, Pandora was like an hour, maybe two hours at the most, and they were gone. So I think we really... You need to keep your eye on this thing. Well, an hour or two isn't too bad, so... It's bad if you're in surgery. <laughs> well, you know what? We did do Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at, at Disneyland. So if we miss it, we miss it. But, I, you know, it would be nice to see it here. Anyway, thanks again for listening. Have a great week, and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.